Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about Hubble's Law. Now in my previous videos I spoke about the uh, effects of Doppler shift and what two scientists, so Edwin Hubble and Milton Hewison, uh, came up with is actually decided to have a look at the objects, how fast they were going using their redshift and how far they were away from us using parallax. And they, what they did is they plotted a graph of this velocity calculated from Doppler shift and the distance um, due to parallax. And they got a graph that looked like this. So this is not exactly, okay, but the kind of graph they got was this. Okay, so each one of those represents a star with its own velocity due to a redshift and its distance away here. And as you can see, there is a positive correlation between the two. Okay, and with all positive correlations, you can take a line of best fit. So, <clears throat> if I took a line of best fit for this, we would get something like that. Now, the gradient of this line of best fit is known as h naught or Hubble's constant, okay? So if I actually look at this formula, so this is a straight line that I've drawn. So the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus c. Well, c is zero because it goes through the intercept. So I've got y, which is velocity, equals my gradient, which is this value known as Hubble's constant ties by the thing on the x-axis, which is d. So here is the Hubble's law, okay? So this is known as Hubble's law. And currently, the accepted value for Hubble's constant is around 65 kilometers per second per mega parsec, okay? So that is the accepted value for this line. Now, there is a significance to Hubble's constant, and it's this. So velocity is distance over time. So if I just put this out a bit, I've got velocity over 1 over time times by the distance. This is the velocity something's going at times by the distance it travelled times 1 over the time it has been travelling for. And if you look at this compared to this equation here, it shows you that this 1 over time, that is Hubble's constant. So Hubble's constant is 1 over time. And this is the time that objects have been flying away from each other for, which is particularly significant because this time is the age of the universe. Because this is the velocity something's going, this is the distance away from us. Because if you can remember from the idea of the Big Bang, it all started from the same position. So everything is being flung away from each other um, by its own velocity. Therefore, the things that were flung away with the most energy, the fastest things, would of course be furthest away from all of us. So if we assume that we were still relatively the centre of the universe, um, if we look at the things that are the th fastest due to their redshift, they should be the things that are furthest away. And this value of Hubble's constant, um, this time, this is because of course distance, this is the time that you've travelled for, this time would represent the age of the universe. So let's see if we can find that in years. So I know that Hubble's constant is 65 kilometres per second per mega parsec. And there's a reason I've written it like this. Because kilometres and mega parsecs are both distances, but they're in different units. So I'm going to convert these initially to metres. Got 65 times 10 to the 3 metres over seconds. And mega is times 10 to the 6. And to go from a par parsec into metres, I have to times by 3.08 times 10 to the 16 metres. So if I actually put all of this information into a calculator here, I have 65 times by 1 times 10 to the 3, so here, divided by 1 times 10 to the 6, 
here, and then divide that by 3 times 10, 3.08 times 10 to the 16, and I get a value for Hubble's constant of 2.11 times 10 to the minus 18 per second. Now, if I do that value there and put 1 over it, so I now want the time, so if I swap these around, I have t is 1 over 2.11 times 10 to the minus 18, okay, which is 4.74 times 10 to the 17 seconds. So if I divide that by 60 to get it into minutes, divide that by 60 again to get it into hours, divide it by 24, and then divide that by 365, I get a value of 1.5 times 10 to the 10 years. So this is 15 billion years. This value for Hubble's constant is telling me that the universe has been around for about 15 billion years. Now, little problems is that, of course, this is a line of best fit, and as we add more data, this line changes. So this value for Hubble's constant consistently changes and also affects the age of the universe. In an exam, you may be expected to plot points on a graph for a number of stars, and <coughs> you are then expected to find the age of the universe. So remembering that the gradient of this is Hubble's constant, so whatever you calculate, um, that would be Hubble's constant there. So whatever your gradient is, that would be Hubble's constant. And then understanding that you have to convert it into meters, so the times 10 to the 3, the mega and the parsec to get it into per second. And then if you do 1 over that, you'll get the time of the age of the universe in seconds, and you can, of course, convert that into years. So Hubble's constant is not a constant at all. It's something that continually changes. And one thing that it's actually quite important for is something known as the critical density of the universe. Now, this is not on the spec, but that it may be asked as a practical kind of question. Okay, so that's the gravitational constant. That is Hubble's constant, and this is 3 over 8 pi. Now, the critical density of the universe is the whole idea of what does the universe do. If I have too much mass, so the mass of the universe is bigger, the density is bigger than the critical density, okay, I will have too much gravitational pull, so I'll expand, and eventually I will have so much gravitational pull, I'll pull back in, and that will be like the big crunch. If I don't have enough mass, okay, so I haven't got enough mass at all, um, what will happen is that the critical density, the density of the universe is less than this critical density, which means that the universe will have more energy than thing pulling it in, so it will just go off, and that's called a big, a big freeze. If we are at the critical density, we will get to a point where we have an equilibrium between the energy pulling out from the Big Bang and gravitational force pulling us in, so we go to a static universe. Now, the problem with calculating this critical density is the fact that Hubble's constant here is not constant, and the fact that it keeps changing. This Hubble's constant, the question they may ask you is, how does Hubble's constant affect the value for the critical density of the universe? And what they want you to realise is that because it's Hubble's constant squared, it will have quite a, a change in it will have a quite a significant effect on the density of the universe. So that is the kind of question they could ask on the back of Hubble's constant. You don't need to know this equation. You don't need to understand about the critical density. They'd have to give you this formula in the first place. But it's actually quite important to understand that Hubble's constant, the fact that it keeps changing, can actually have some really detrimental effects to cosmology and understanding the fate of the universe. So that there is the graph of Hubble's constant, or Hubble's law and being able to use Hubble's constant to work out the age of the universe.